1250 WCTC and WCTCAM.com, the voice of Rutgers football. The Kyle Flood Show is a weekly one-hour program with the new Scarlet Knight head coach. Now, let's go live to the Audi Rutgers Club at High Point Solution Stadium in Pascal. Here are your co-hosts, former Scarlet Knight player Eric Legrand and the voice of Rutgers, Chris Carlin. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Kyle Flood Show right here on the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and on ScarletKnights.com on our vision. Thanks so much for joining us, Kurtz Carlin, alongside Eric Legrand and the coach, Kyle Flood. Great to be with you again, coach. Great to be here. Quick turnaround for the radio show as well as the game week. Well, we'll get to that Mm -hmm. in just a few moments. You know, we'd be remiss, though, if we didn't mention... Uh, to start out tonight, of course, the 11th anniversary of September the 11th, 2001. And I know for both of you, you're, you're very closely uh, involved in, in, in just remembering uh, the events of 9-11 and also family that, that have been involved as well with first responders for you, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know anybody who grew up in this part of the country, in this area specifically like I did, you know, our prayers are with all the families and, and the lives that were touched that day. You know, my brother is, is NYPD, and I have a brother-in-law who is FDNY. But it's really all the all the emergency responders in the tri-state area that were uh, that were either in the towers or got summoned to that to Ground Zero right away. You know, our prayers are with their families tonight. And Eric, I know that you were uh, at Cantor Fitzgerald this morning in the city. Yeah, I got invited down there. You know, to go to their charity. You know, to help them raise money for all the people that lost their lives and the families that need the money because they lost. People that are working for them, and you know it was it was a great event to come out to. You got to see Sanchez, you know, was there, and uh, Rex Ryan. Just a great event, you know. Seeing the stock exchange going on, this it's a crazy world out there. It's actually it was actually good to see, but definitely enjoyed myself and had a good time, and it was definitely for a good cause. Well, it was, uh, it was certainly. A day that none of us will ever forget too soon, and uh, those of us in the Rutgers community as well certainly uh, remember that all of our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims of September the 11th. And for the Scarlet Knights, it is week three, and as Coach mentioned, it is a short turnaround. Rutgers is coming off a 26 to nothing win over Howard. We've got an opportunity for you to talk to the coach tonight here in person at the Audi Rutgers Club and also a couple of different ways. First of all, on the telephone, 732-545-9282. That's 732-545-WCTC. You can also send us a tweet at Athletics. Or go to Facebook and go to facebook.com slash rfootballshow. Leave your questions. We're going to get as many as we can in over the next hour. First of all, just uh, your thoughts uh, with the win over Howard on Saturday. Uh, How do you evaluate your football team after watching the tape? You know, we'd have to evaluate them very quickly because the uh, the turnaround, as I said before, is is fast. And, And with the game this Thursday night, you don't have a lot of time to dwell on what happened in the game before. You really just you pick and choose the pieces of that game that will apply to what we think South Florida is going to try to do to us Thursday night, and we teach and we correct you know, off those plays, and then the rest of it we try and get back to on the bye weeks. Yeah, how do you think the team felt that, you know, bouncing back so fast, coming back to practice on a Sunday night? Do you think their bodies were rested even though they got pulled most of the starters out after the third quarter? How do you think most of them felt? We, we did, and, and the way the game went, we were fortunate to be able to get some other guys in there in the fourth quarter and let them play a little bit because Sunday night, as you said, you know, we were out there practicing. You know, whereas Sunday night is usually, you know, we run around for a little bit, but we don't do too much. You know, we had a, a regular practice, a Tuesday-type practice on Sunday evening to get ready, and I, I think the players feel good. You know, we've, we've tried to be a, as careful as we can this week in terms of the workload on their feet. You know, we've extended meetings. We've shortened practice time because the most important thing is that we're full speed Thursday night. Let's get into a couple of specifics from the game the other night. First of all, uh, a couple of guys who were honored by the Big East this week. Brandon Jones, the Big East Special Teams Player of the Week, recovering a, fu- a uh, block punt for a touchdown. Second straight week, he has a touchdown. And Jamal Morrell was just outstanding on the defensive side on the Big East honor roll. 14 tackles, three and a half for loss, Coach. You know, it was... It was exciting to see Brandon get recognized in you know, the second week in a row scoring a, t- a non-offensive touchdown. You know, he's been an excellent playmaker for us, and certainly uh, maybe half that award goes to Miles Schuler for blocking the punt you know, that Brandon was go- that had the opportunity to scoop and score. And it, w- it was really nice to see Jamal come out and play the game that he did. And, and his brother actually played a really nice game as well, Jamil. And, and coming off the tragedy in their family the week before, you know, both of them really played inspired football. 
You know, Coach, because everyone knows out there playing football, special teams sometimes gets overlooked, but you know, just like I know, how important it really is out there. Can you tell us a little bit about how Miles Shuler got through that and how much of a big impact that was in the, to the game plan? You know, I have to give a, a lot of the credit to Coach Rossi and mm-hmm. Coach Smith for coming up with the schemes that designed, you know, those kind of punt blocks. And, and when we practice it during the week, you know, he came clean during the week. And we felt like if he had an opportunity to do that, you know, he was going to trust his training and then ultimately block the punt. And sure enough, he came pretty clean off that edge. You know, Miles is one of the faster players on the field, regardless of who's on the field. You know, he's got elite level speed. And on that particular play, we were fortunate that they turned him loose. And so I had no doubt in my mind that he was going to get there. Seven three two five four five WCTC seven three two five four five nine two eight two to talk to the coach, and this is nothing new because since Rob Smith got here a few years ago, we've you've, you've been in a spot where Rutgers has led the country in block kicks during this stretch. What what is it that allows you to be so successful in this regard? I really believe it's it's the coaches doing an excellent job schematically. But more important than that is the players buying into it. You know, our recipe for success here at Rutgers is is not a secret, I think, to anybody. You know, we want to play great defense. We want to run the football on offense to open up, hopefully, big plays in the passing game. And we want, at some point in every game, for special teams to have a positive effect on the outcome for Rutgers. And a lot of times that involves blocking kicks. And we spend a lot of time in practice devoted to that. We have a great system in place for training the players to do it. But most importantly, like I said before, we have a group of players that believe in it. They believe special teams can win for us. And, you know, most of the time you see defensive players on special teams. So when you saw Miles Schuler on the offensive play block, you think the receivers, you know, gave him a little bit more credit, Rob, did it? Because that is an offensive player out there when you usually see the defensive guys on the special teams. Yeah, you know, it's a great, it's a great insight. And it's one of, the, one of the things when we brought new coaches to the staff, that was one of the things that Coach Brock brought up early on. He says, how come more offensive players don't play special teams? And I said to him, I said, well, Dave, I, I can't really answer that question because I personally have only been involved with the PAT team in the past. So we made that an emphasis in training camp to get more offensive players involved. You know, Coach Brock told stories about when he coached Jordy Nelson. He said Jordy Nelson was one of the most dynamic special teams players they had at Kansas State when he was coaching there, along, along with being one of their better receivers as well. So we made it an emphasis in preseason to try and get more offensive guys involved, and it paid off because Miles did a great job on that play. We've got a question from one of the fans here in attendance at the Audi Rutgers Club. Where are you from? Uh, what's your name? Where are you from? And your question for Coach. Uh, how you doing? My name is Chris Danielle. I'm from Norwood, New Jersey. Uh, first of all, uh, hi, Coach. How, how you, you doing, are? Chris? Uh, good, good. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, what do you think the keys are to the, the Rutgers' success against uh, USF this weekend to ensure a victory? I really believe you know, success for our football team is, is the exact recipe I, I was just talking about. I think for us it always starts with running the football on offense. If we have the ability to run the foot, it's going to be a great challenge this week because they have a tremendous defense down there in South Florida. I don't know if I've, I can remember the la- I cannot remember the last time in my career going against a defense that did not have an underclassman on the defense. The entire defense is juniors and seniors, and, and they're very good. It seems like they, every year they have waves of defensive linemen that continue to come through their program and play at a high level. They have a linebacker named Sam Barrington who caused two fumbles last week versus Nevada. And so that, that's going to be critical for our success, the ability to run the football. And then after that, it's playing great defense, and it's affecting the game on special teams, whether that's blocking a kick, having a big return like Jeremy Daring in last year's game where we, we really weren't playing that well offensively, but we played great defense, timely defense, and we returned a kick in the fourth quarter down 17-3 to at a point in the game where it, it, we were running out of time. So, it, you know, th- that's our recipe for success. And I think as we do those things, the only thing I'd add to it is the better the run game, the more one-on-one opportunities on the outside for guys like Mark Harrison, Timmy Wright, Brandon Coleman, Jeremy Deering, Karan Pratt, et cetera, the opportunities for the pass game come. Well, we know that Juwan Jamison is going to get a lot of the glory and having four out of his last five games over 100 yards, you have to be impressed with what he's done. But the guys up front are doing a terrific job, and especially when you factor in you had a couple of injuries during the game on the offensive line, so you had to call on Matt McBride and Taj Alexander to step up. This is a group so far that has rushed for over 150 yards in each game and hasn't allowed a sack yet this year. Coach, I mean, have you been beyond pleased, obviously, when you see those kind of numbers that this line has put up? Uh, we are pleased to date. We really are. And it's, it's the start of a good body of work you know, for them. It's not one game anymore now. It's two games. So, so we're pleased. But I would also say that this will be our greatest challenge yeah. this week. You know, the opening of Big East play, 
against one of the more talented defenses in our league, one of the better defensive lines in our league. Th- this is going to be a, a, a great game to gauge how far we really have come. And, Coach, can you talk about a little bit about matchups? You know, when you got Brandon Coleman lined up out there, Mark Harrison on the other side, Karan Pat lining up in the slot, can you show have to tell about how that opens up the running game? I, they can't bring safeties down in the box because they're bringing down to cover the wide receivers. You're absolutely correct. If we can put defenses in a situation where they got to keep two safeties back, mm-hmm. the numbers get a lot friendlier in the box. And if we can get Juwan Jamison through the first level, he's already shown that he can make you miss. Uh, Savon Huggins got a little banged up into the game. We'll get into the injuries in a second. But Ben Martin came on, played quite a bit in the fourth quarter. He's a guy that all of a sudden has kind of slid up the depth chart a little bit out of necessity. But your evaluation of Ben and kind of how he factors in here. We were very pleased. You know, very pleased. You know, we got to a point in the in the end of the game where maybe we could have taken a knee, but I thought it was important for Ben to get some, some live fire work, so to speak, and we handed it to him a couple more times just to, to see how he would handle that situation, almost like a, um, a, a tryout on the move. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, his response was good. And the way he played, we were very pleased with. He protected the football, which is always the most important thing for any player on offense. And moving forward, he's a guy who's going to have to, ultimately he's going to have to touch the ball for us. With that being said, can we see him being a big factor in this next week's game? You know, I think he's going to get opportunities. You know, he's going to get opportunities. You know, Juwan Jamison, I think, has – proven that he deserves the majority of those opportunities, but I don't think there's any running back that can take them all. You know, we're going to have to have somebody else and, and not to jump ahead, but right now, you know, Savon hasn't been able to practice this week, so he's going to be a game-time decision, but it's always hard when you don't practice to go in and play effectively. We're going to need somebody else to take some of those carries, and, and Ben Martin is going to be the next guy in line. Where else do you stand here health-wise on the offensive line up front and, and on the defensive side? Very pleased with what I saw from Batim today. You know, he looked great running around out there, so we feel comfortable saying that he'll go on Thursday night. Uh, Andre Civil hasn't been able to do much this week. You know, we've got to keep evaluating him right up till game time. You know, but I think we're going to see you know, Taj in there to start the game. And, and I'm excited about that because Taj has worked very hard to get to this moment and, and get this opportunity, and he's earned this opportunity. I'm excited to see what he's going to do out there. When, with Paul, he's going to come back this week too, I believe. So do you think he'll play a big factor too in the run game and also in the passing game? I do. I think we'll see Paul Carazola back on the field this week, and, and that will give us the ability to play Paul in D.C. and sometimes at the same time. And you'll, you're going to see some Tyler Croft also. You know, he, right. won't, he won't disappear from the game plan. You know, There's certain things that he can do that can help us. Phone calls. Let's get to them at 732-545-WCTC. Joe in New Brunswick starts us off tonight. Joe, you're on the Kyle Flood Show. Yeah, good evening, Coach. Good evening. I just wanted to uh, make a comment that uh, I, I know the university decided to, to sell out to Nike on these uniforms and, and basically throw away 140 years tradition of being scarlet and white, but the uniforms, we can't see the numbers from the stands, we can't see the names, uh, you don't see the R on the helmet because it is silver. Any chance we go back to the traditional uh, scarlet and white? <laughs> this sounds like a question for Tough Tim Pernetti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting, one of, the, one of the things you said, you know, it, what, uh, one of the things I found out in the off season, is that I want to say over the last 20 years or so, we've had almost 20 different helmets. You know, we've had quite a few different helmets, and this yeah, is kind of... Had, we've always had a red helmet. I mean, squ- or silver is nowhere in one of our colors, and it's, we can't see the numbers or anything. You know... You know the spring game is a scarlet and white game. Those, I mean, those are our colors. Black the spring game will continue game. to be a scarlet and white game. I can promise you that. What about the, the, the New York Plus? We can't see the numbers or names or the R. There's a silver helmet that's... It's horrible. So if, if I'm hearing what you're saying, you're not a fan of the New York Force. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, I, I, I think there's a couple of things at work here. You look at the – I see the uniforms. I'm up there. So my view for the game is up there with the fans. I'm seeing them okay, and i got to call the game. So it's not too bad, you know. But at the same time, uh, you know, at SNY, we still have the pictures up from when you came in. Uh, earlier this spring to unveil the new uniforms. I- I'm sorry. I'm a fan. They're, they're pretty darn I'm shocked. a fan, too. I like those black ones and the white ones. Yeah. I would, I would also add that the young people in high school we're recruiting seem to be very big fans, yeah. and that makes me happy. <laughs> and we've also got the blackout game coming up in a couple of weeks. It'll be black, and also uh, Scarlet is, is involved there in the uniform as well. I'm waiting for the, you know, the mini helmets. Those are going to go on sale soon. I'm looking forward to seeing those, too. I'm sure they'll look sharp. Well, I don't got... think our last caller will be buying them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll t- get more calls in shortly at uh, 732-545-WCTC, 732 
You can tweet us your questions at RU Athletics. We'll get to those shortly. And also Facebook.com slash Show. We've got a lot to get into over the next 40 minutes. We will uh, talk about uh, the Scarlet Knights getting ready for South Florida. We'll get into that matchup a little bit more. We'll also talk about a couple of different aspects of this game that are pretty interesting, not only being on national television in prime time, but also an opportunity for several Scarlet Knights to get home and play in, some of the, play in front of some of their own families and, and friends as well. So all of that coming up. Stay with us. It is the Kyle Flood Show. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll take a quick timeout from Nelligan Sports. This is the Kyle Flood Show. For over 20 years in New York City, Brother Jimmy's Barbecue has been serving up great times as well as some of the best barbecue this side of North Carolina. And now Brother Jimmy's is opening in downtown New Brunswick on the corner of Easton Avenue and Wall Street. We are the official provider to Rutgers football and are proud to announce who will be the 2012 host of Coach Blood's weekly radio show every Wednesday night. So come on down to Brother Jimmy's and put some south in your mouth. For reservations and event information, visit us at BrotherJimmy's.com. Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, located at 5 Easton Avenue, New Brunswick, New Jersey. See y'all soon. Today, the world is more opinionated than ever before, so you tend to take notice when everyone agrees on something, like the opinions drivers have about the new Audi A4 with its dramatic redesigned LED lights, MMI with Audi Connect and Navigation enhanced by Google Earth. It's no wonder Strategic Vision ranked the A4 highest total quality in its class. See the new Audi A4 at your nearest New Jersey Audi dealer today. Your New Jersey Audi dealers, proud sponsors of Rutgers Athletics. Health First New Jersey wants to let you know it's open enrollment time for families who have New Jersey Family Care. From October 1st through November 15th, you can choose which free or low-cost health insurance plan is right for your family. By choosing Health First New Jersey, your family will continue to receive great benefits. Like doctor visits, vaccinations, prescription medicine, hospital visits, and that's not all. Children receive dental care and much more. It's time to pick the plan that meets your needs. Open enrollment runs from October 1st through November 15th. Call 1-855-999-HFNJ Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's 1-855-999-HFNJ. Hearing or speech impaired, call 1-800-852-7897 or visit them online at INeedHealthCare.org. That's INeedHealthCare.org. It's time for a new choice. Choose the New Jersey Family Care Plan from Health First New Jersey. Now, back to the Audi Rutgers Club at High Point Solution Stadium in Piscataway for more of the Kyle Flood Show on the new talk radio, 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Once again, here are your co-hosts, Chris Carlin and Eric Legrand, along with Rutgers head football coach, Kyle Flood. We are at the Audi Rutgers Club at High Point Solution Stadium in Piscataway. It is the Kyle Flood Show on the new talk radio, 1450 WCTC, and on scarletknights.com, on our vision on scarletknights.com. We also made it onto Deadspin last week as well. We had our friend Ann Gentilly. It was fantastic when she came by. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a couple of things that we do want to touch on from this past weekend. Coach, the crowd was outstanding this past week. Tremendous. And uh, having only one game one home game in September, you know, for our players, we couldn't have been more excited coming out of the tunnel, over 11,000 students in the student section, and that's right where we come out. It, it, it is an energizing force for our football team. And I know being a player, when you come out and you see that kind of crowd, it really gets you energized and ready to run down on a kickoff or do a kick return. You know, if it didn't rain, Coach, I think the whole the cold crowd would have been there the entire game. I agree, and there was even a section of the students that stayed through the rain. They looked oh, like yeah. they were having a good time <laughs> over there. They were waiting for us at the end. I'll tell you the other group that we need to give a quick shout-out to, Tim Smith and the Rutgers Band, because the skies opened up the second they came out on the field and you had gone inside for halftime. They did an amazing job, Didn't did not miss a beat through a complete downpour. Those were some tough conditions. I don't get to see them at halftime because yeah. we're working a little bit, but I did get an opportunity to see them earlier in the week when they were doing their dress rehearsal, and I got a chance to say a few words and tell them how much we appreciate them because even though I'm not watching the band, you know, my family is. You know, yeah. They're at the game, and they're watching, and during halftime, they're enjoying that show. No fun playing in the rain. I know that for sure, so I can imagine only playing in the band. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to a phone call, 732-545-9282. Eric in Westchester, New York, is on the Kyle Flood Show. Eric, how are you? I'm fine. How are you guys doing? How you doing, Eric? I'm good. Um, you guys have done a pretty good job so far in defense and special teams. I just have a few questions about things that haven't gone quite as well. 
Number one, I think you guys have had about 20 penalties in the first two games, which is quite excessive, and I'm curious as to what you can do to fix that. Um, secondly, I would like you to address the quarterback play, which uh, looks pretty spotty, and I'm wondering if it will take for Chase Dodd to get a chance. And third, there have been a fair number of receiver drops, and I'm curious how one corrects that problem, whether it's trying new receivers or sticking with the same guys in shorter routes so it's easier for them or what you as a coach can do to try to help the situation. That's and, it, huh? <laughs> well, I got some more. If you want. What do you think <laughs> of the uniforms? <laughs> can you see the numbers? Um, I'm not a big fan of the, um, the silver letters, as people said, or the silver helmets, but I think the, the cut looks sharp. But I, I think it looks a little bit, you know, sort of... Um, Actually, say a little bit too guilt and flash, and not enough uh, sort of traditional football. Oh. That was almost a compliment. We'll take it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> almost, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, to address a couple of the things you said. That, you know, there, if there was a a magic formula or a magic potion to reducing penalties, you know, certainly all the coaches around the country would be doing it. You know, we're not we're not happy about where we are in terms of committing those. The ones we really focus on, though are the unforced errors, you know, false starts, delay of games, offsides on defense. Those are the ones that hopefully we will be able to, to focus in on and minimize going forward. In terms of throwing and catching the ball, we have very talented receivers. We have very talented quarterbacks. I, I, don't, I don't concern myself with that at all. I, I really, our players are working very hard at it, but it, it's like anything else. It's, it, it, nobody's certainly going out there trying to drop the football. And, the majority of the, of the receivers, the vast majority who are actually playing in the games for us, they have enough of a resume on film. We know they're going to catch the ball. So that, that is something that, that's going to come around, and hopefully it'll turn around quickly uh, this Thursday. And I, I think the – what was the – there was a third question. Uh, what was he talking about? The, uh, something about the quarterback play? Uh, the quarterback play. You know, I, I think Gary is, is getting a little bit better each week, and whether or not that will manifest itself into – really flashy statistics in the passing game, you know, I, I don't know that. It, it may, it may not. But right now he's, he's helping us win football games. We certainly have to minimize the turnovers. But that's something that we'll, we'll say from now through the end of the season regardless of, of the result. Can you talk about, Coach, uh, turnovers? That really controls the, t- the team's game and how basically how much points you can put up and what position you put your offense or defense in. So can you explain about how protecting the ball is really a key to the game? It, it really is. You know, turnovers, they, uh, they're like immediate field position swings when they happen, and, and you have to do everything you can to minimize them. And, and I use the word minimize because nobody's perfect. They're going to happen. And, and we've done a really good job to, uh, to this point in the season of protecting the football in the run game. You know, we have not uh, lost a fumble as of yet. We had one, but we recovered it, mm-hmm. which is a great testament to Mark Harrison really running to the football and playing with great effort. But when, in the passing game, you know, we have had a couple interceptions, and we've got to do a little bit better job of trying to minimize those going forward so we don't put our defense in a bad position. We've got a question from one of the fans in attendance here. What's your name and where are you from? Hey, Coach. Uh, I'm George Barbetto. I'm from Hamilton, New Jersey. Hey, uh, George. My question is – well. More of a comment than a question. I have uh, – so Kasim Green last year was uh, clearly the leader of the defense. So this year, who has been the uh, unsung hero on the defense, and what have they done to earn that? We're very fortunate. I know it, it seems that way on, on the outside, and I've heard people say that to me, that Kasim is the leader of the defense, and he is one of the leaders of the defense. I'm not trying to, to uh, minimize that in any way. But we're very fortunate on defense to have established players and really strong leadership on every level of the defense. On the defensive line, we have a guy like Scott Vallone, who started every game since he's been here as a redshirt freshman, has started more games than anybody else in the Big East this year. Marvin Booker and Cleo Glaude, you know, fifth-year seniors, they're leaders on our defense. On the second level, we have Kasim Green and Steve Baharnas. You know, Steve being the middle linebacker makes all the calls, makes all the adjustments up front. He's really like a defensive coordinator on the field. So between him and Kasim, we have tremendous leadership on the second level of defense. And then as you move back to the third level, you've got guys like Deron Harmon, Marcus Cooper, Brandon Jones, Logan Ryan, people that have played a lot of football here. Wayne Warren, who plays a tremendous amount on our third down. He plays on first, second down, but really has a huge role on third down and on special teams. So we're very fortunate on the defensive side of the ball. We've got a lot of established players and really leadership coming from every level. Also, uh, on behalf of the students, um, we think the jerseys are pretty – Pretty nice. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Hey, Coach. You're my guy, George. <laughs> With that being said, you know, we were just talking about how uh, South Florida, they have 
whole bunch of juniors and seniors. Do you think that puts us at a tie advantage with them with all the experience that we have on the defense also? It creates a very challenging matchup for our offense. Uh, there's no doubt about it. They have a nose guard uh, by the name of Corey Grissom, who has played a lot of football down there, number 46. A, a tr- as disruptive a guy as there is in our league up front. They've got two defensive ends in Ryan Giddens and Tevin Mims who, who can really get after the passer, and, and they're going to they're gonna challenge our pass protection. Your Ryan G- uh, Tevin Mims actually ended the game last week with a sack as Nevada was very close to field goal range where they could have kicked the field goal to win the game. Tevin Mims sacks the quarterback, the game's over. So you know, it's going to create a tremendous challenge for our offense to continue – the way we've been able to run the ball and protect the quarterback, but the, the stakes have certainly gone up with Big East play this week. We've got a question from Twitter, and we will uh, take more of those at RU Athletics. You can tweet them to at RU Athletics, and the first one comes from GQ Zoolander, and he wants to know, uh, Coach, how do you stop a spread offense quarterback? I don't know that you stop a spread offense quarterback, and I, I don't know that you stop a – I'm assuming he's talking about B.J. Daniels. Yeah. I, I don't know that you can stop B.J. Daniels. He's one of the more dynamic uh, playmakers in our conference. What you try to do is contain him, and, and you try to keep him in the pocket because some of the – what happens is some of the some of the bigger plays that he makes are the broken plays, the plays where he gets loose out of the pocket, and now all of a sudden he's, he's running for a 15- or 20-yard gain on a play where you had everybody covered – and he didn't really have a pass option. Well, now his feet become an option. So I don't think it's about stopping him, but I do think it is about containing him. You know, a lot of teams know playing B.J. Daniels, you take his head out of the game, you take him out of the game. Is that going to be a big focus on this week, taking his head out of the game? Because once that happens, he can throw you four interceptions in a row. Well, that would be a nice outcome for us, for sure, if he did that. <laughs> you know, we're going you know, to play Rutgers defense, and you know that. And a big part of playing Rutgers defense, if we can get people in third and long situations, we certainly have a, a, an extensive package with disguised coverages and blitzes and things like that to hopefully get him out, get him off his game a little bit. We'll get into more of uh, the matchup with B.J. Daniels in just a few moments, but to give you a quick idea, through two games, he's thrown for 588 yards, six touchdowns, one interception. Last time I checked, I didn't play the game on this level, but that's not bad. He's an excellent player, and every year he's been the starter, and he seems like he's been there forever. But every year he's been the starter, he gets a little bit better, and, and somebody had asked me about you know, what we had been able to do on defense the last couple of years. And I said, you know, that's certainly a nice starting point for us in terms of game planning. But what you're seeing this year is a better version of B.J. Daniels than what you've seen the prior years. And the numbers certainly dictate that. We've got another question from somebody in attendance live here. What's your name and where are you from? Hi, Coach. It's Eric from Bridgewater. Hey, Eric. Um, following up on your earlier comments regarding Rutgers football and the game plan, it seems that we really emphasize uh, ball control, very methodical offense, Rutgers defense. Do you foresee a quicker tempo in future games in getting plays in, getting quicker to the line, quicker out of the huddle, quicker to the next play? Seemingly a lot of teams in college football, whether they're running the spread or a pro-style offense, are going quicker from play to play, sometimes even calling two plays in the huddle to get quicker to the line to catch guys on the field, to catch defenses unprepared. Do you see Rutgers football doing that in the future, and do you think right now with our experience level we're capable of doing that? I don't know that I would take anything off the table in the future. I've been a part of offenses like that at other places that I've coached, and I know Coach Brock has and Coach Spence has. They have a a lot of experience doing the types of things that you're talking about. That's not where we're at right now. Could it be something that we end up evolving into in the future? I I certainly wouldn't take it off the table. But I think regardless of, of what you decide you're going to do, it's very important for the players to understand what it is that you believe in. And if you believe in something and you practice it over and over again, you've got a great chance to get better at it. And for us, it's a very simple recipe. We want to run the football. If we're able to run the football, that will open up everything we want in the passing game. If you struggle to run the football, it makes everything harder because now they don't have to add that eighth guy into the box or some teams an eventual ninth guy into the box if they play what's called quarters coverage. But for us right now, we know what we want to be, and we're very comfortable doing it. In the future, I wouldn't take anything off the table. We got uh, a couple of. We got certainly uh, plenty of time to get in your questions at seven three two five four five WCTC, and you can also tweet us at RU Athletics. We got a couple of more of those coming up in a moment. I got a couple of things that I was thinking about during the week that I wanted to ask you about. Number one, uh, you've got two guys named Darnell, both with Super Bowl rings on your staff now, and Darnell Dinkins, your tight ends coach, and Darnell Stapleton, one of the assistants uh, with the offense, and. You know, 
what does it do when you can have two guys with such vast experience at the highest level on your staff here? I think the, the most important thing it does for the players is, is it gives them a resource that they really see as a valid resource in terms of preparation. I mean, when somebody like Darnell Stapleton or Darnell Dinkins talks to the players about how you prepare to play the game at the next level, it's not like myself as a coach saying it where I just know what the other players have told me. They're talking about how they lived it, how they took care of their bodies, how they watched film on their own, how they studied the game plan, how, what they did after practice on their own time to get ready to ultimately help their teams win and, Super Bowls. And not, all, and not in all, the, all that distant past. I mean, no. Darnell Stapleton was part of the 06 team, and Darnell Dinkins just retired from the NFL a year or two ago. He did. He did. And, and there's no doubt that when they speak, the players listen. Yeah. You know, being a player, when a new coach comes in, sometimes you get you get close to one player. I know how that felt when I lost my defensive line coach at first, but then someone else comes in, and you get new things, and you hear new things. How do you think the team going into week three has so far adjusted to this new coaching staff and being bringing them a part of the Rutgers family now, the Rutgers program? I think the adjustment's been very good. You know, I can speak you know, for the D-line. Coach Panagos brings a wealth of experience, some of it from the NFL, some of it from college. And he's done a great job with, with those defensive linemen. And, and they've had quite a few coaches, as you know, haven't played that position over, over the last seven years. But I, I think Jim has done a really good job with that group, getting, getting them to believe in what he teaches and taking what he teaches and adapting it to the, to the Rutgers defense because the Rutgers defense didn't change. But when you have new coaches, what you have is opportunity for everybody to get better. So if there are certain things that we can add that don't change what we do but maybe just make it a little bit better – that's, I think, what a new coaching staff can do for you. Coach, an opportunity for some of your guys to get back home, the Florida guys this week, and get an opportunity to play in front of their friends and family, D.C. Jefferson from about 40 minutes away in Winter Haven, and, and uh, also Jeremy Deering nearby, Jawan Jamison. From your standpoint, how great is this to get – how good is this to get an opportunity for those guys to get home too, considering they're such a big part of what you're doing here? It really makes it makes me feel good that they get an opportunity to play a game in, in their home state, and we've always considered Florida a part of the state of Rutgers for recruiting purposes. And to see guys like Caleb Johnson and Antoine Lowry, Juwan Jamison, D.C. Jefferson, Jeremy Deering on offense, and then guys like Grief Glashin and Marcus Thompson on defense, and, and certainly Kyle Federico, our freshman kicker from Ponte Vedra, to, to, for them to have an opportunity to go down there and, and play in front of maybe the extended part of their family that can't travel up north every week. You know, that makes me feel really good. But I, what we also have to do, though, is we got to educate them on how to avoid the distractions. And, and we did. And that was that was another area where Darnell Dinkins and Darnell Stapleton were able to help me this week in terms of talking to them because they talked about their Super Bowl experience and what it can be like when everybody wants tickets. And I think that's a little bit of what happens to, to our players from Florida when we play down there. They get inundated with a lot of requests, and we got to help them manage that. That's interesting. I yeah. hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, I was just down there actually at Polk State, and that's right in Winter Haven. And I see that there's a huge amount of Rutgers fans down there. Do you think that's an advantage, not having Florida fans going against their own team in South Florida right there, now joining the Rutgers bandwagon when they have their players coming up here to play? You know, we, we – uh, We've always had a great following on the road, and down there I think we'll have quite a few people in Scarlet, oh, yeah. you know, hopefully in the jerseys that our callers like, but they'll, they'll be there in the stands, and they'll be cheering us on. And that, that section of the stadium, it's, it's certainly it's never the majority when you're on the road, but that section of the stadium is always very special to us when we come out. I might be wrong about this, but if memory serves, the 06 season went down there, won a dramatic game 22-20, and, if I'm not mistaken, at one end of the stadium, the entire Rutgers contingent was there, and South Florida actually had to call a timeout because it was too loud. They were pinned within, inside their own tent. That's a good memory. The other lasting memory I have of that game is one of the McCordys knocking down a two-point yep. play. An Jason, eventual tying play. Yep, it was Jason knocking it down, and he's doing all right for himself these days. He's done the pretty well. He's done pretty well. <laughs> well, we've got plenty of time to get into the matchup with South Florida. We're going to do that coming up in just a bit. Brother Jimmy's is the official barbecue provider to Rutgers football. It is the perfect destination for all things barbecue, sports, and fun. Facebook.com slash our football show. You can tweet us at RU Athletics. We'll get a couple of those in momentarily. We'll talk about Rutgers' big matchup opening up the Big East schedule this coming Thursday night in prime time against the University of South Florida down in Tampa. Stay with us from Nelligan Sports. This is the Kyle Flood Show. 
AT&T asks, are you that guy? That guy who not only paints his face to cheer on his team, but then paints his entire torso? Well, you don't have to be that guy to prove your fanhood. Switch to AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. Get scores in a flash and highlights in a jiffy. It sure beats belly paint. You have the speed to follow your favorite sports from almost anywhere in the network of possibilities. AT&T, rethink possible. Mobile broadband not available in all areas. Visit att.com or store for details. Investors Bank is a proud sponsor of Rutgers Scarlet Knights football. With branches throughout New Jersey, we're here to help you with all your personal and business banking needs. Investors gives back to New Jersey's communities. Visit one of our branches and experience the investors difference. For a branch near you, call us at 855-I-BANK-4-U. That's 855-I-B-A-N-K number 4-U. Or visit myinvestorsbank.com. That's myinvestorsbank.com. Member FDIC. Are you a golfer? Always wanted to experience the pride and privilege of membership at a private club like Forsgate Country Club in Monroe Township? Thought membership was simply out of reach? Unattainable? Well, think again. Forsgate, the area's premier family club, is home to two championship courses, including the legendary Banks course. Act now to take advantage of Forsgate's fall for free promotion. All you do is join now for 2013, and you can golf for free for the remaining of 2012. As a member, you'll have unlimited access to both courses, practice range and facilities, professional lessons, special golf and social events, casual and formal dining and more. And get this, there is no initiation fee and never an assessment at Forsgate Country Club. Some restrictions do apply. Call membership director Carol Rutherford for details at 732-656-8914. That's 732-656-8914. Yes, you can become a member of one of the finest clubs in the state. Known affectionately by its members as The Gate, Forsgate. Now, more of the Kyle Flood Show, the weekly hour-long program with the head football coach of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights on the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Let's go back to your co-hosts Chris Carlin and Eric Legrand at the Audi Rutgers Club at High Point Solution Stadium in Piscataway. Prime time, just less than 48 hours away now from game time. Rutgers visiting South Florida, the Big East opener, Thursday night, ESPN, 7.30. First of all, Coach, the opportunity to get to play prime time in the, as you called it earlier this week in your news conference, the Monday night football of college football. Very exciting. Very exciting to know that you are the only game on around the country, and certainly I watch it when I get an opportunity to do that, and the players know that their peers are watching it. You know, the friends they have from high school that might be playing at other universities, they're certainly watching. And, you know, the, the entire playing and coaching fraternity is watching football Thursday night, and, and they're going to be watching us from South Florida this week. We all know the weather is different down in South Florida, Coach. So what do you think it's going to play out? You know, it's, right now it's calling for a low of 74. Do you think that's an advantage for Rutgers up here, or do you know practice for that kind of weather? The humidity is always different down there than it is up here. So how do you think that fit, fits into the game? Yeah. I think it's critical that that we do a great job of hydrating starting today. Mm -hmm. And we talked to our players about that starting today because game day is too late. You really have to start the hydration process 48 hours in advance. And and you know, Eric, because you've done it with us. You know, we have a whole process that we go through the last 48 hours to try and and minimize any cramping issues. And, and, you know, knock on wood, we've, we've been pretty good so far this year. But you're right. You're going into a different environment with a different type of humidity. So if you don't do everything the way you need to leading up to the game, you, you get into situations where you might need the IV at halftime, and you want to avoid all those things because those are things you don't want to deal with at halftime if you can avoid them. Well, you were telling us a story about your first trip to South Florida when oh, you yeah. were playing during the break. Tell, tell, us, tell the audience that story. I'll never forget. It was the last two-minute drill of the game. We were already up by a few points, so they just were just trying to put any points up on the board. It was a 13-play drive. And at the end of that drive, I remember we had to walk to the band and sing. And I barely made it over to the band. Then had to walk to the locker room. Everyone was running. I walked my entire way to that locker room. Got a locker room. And Coach Yano wanted me to do a chant. And I had to go fill up on three Gatorade just so I could catch my breath down there. <laughs> From 13 plays of that game. It was crazy that humidity, Coach. Well, the, the difficulty of playing those, in those kind of conditions. You, you talked about the hydration process. What are the other challenges there? I, th- I think, you know, just getting down there and, and – the, the challenge of being in a road stadium, you know, I think ultimately you know, we've gone through a, a really tough training camp with some hot days. I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to surprise us. You know, and it being a night game, you know, it might not be as 
as hot as it would be maybe if you played a 12 noon game, which which I think is when we started the one Eric's yeah, talking about. Because I remember Joe Martinick had a good day that day as well in, in the run game. So I don't know that the challenges are much different than than any other game. I think you just have to be aware of the conditions you're going into. Let's get to, to one of the tweets, and we'll get to a question here in person from one of our fans in attendance at the Audi Rutgers Club. Uh, this from the only D Rose on Twitter. Have the older veterans been taking a lead in charge of practice this week, especially stressing how big of a game this is on Thursday? We've, we, our upperclassmen have done a good job the entire year uh, of leading the younger guys in our program. I don't know that that needs to be said. I think everybody in the program knows what's at stake. We play in a conference that does not have a championship game. What that means is every time you play a Big East game, it's a Big East championship game. You don't have a way to make it up at the end. You know, if you put yourself behind, then you have to hope to get some help. You don't want to do that. So this is the first Big East championship game that we get to play this year. I think everybody in the program knows what the stakes are. You think the veterans, you know, of the team help the younger players of coming into a game like this first Big East game of some of their careers, you know, going out there and then playing on prime time at 8 p.m. on a Thursday night game, the cameras right there, the four angle cameras right there behind you. Do you think the veterans help the jitters from the younger players? I think they, they talk to the younger players. I think they try to describe the environment. But I really think the, the most important way that they can help is to really take a leadership role on the field mm-hmm. and be the ones that we can rely on to make plays early in the game because – I'm sure you can attest to this. The first time you're out there in that environment, it's a little bit different. Oh, yeah. You're right. You got the camera up top, and and when you see that camera up top, you know it's a you know it's a big game. <laughs> Let's get to one of our fans here who has a question for the coach. What's your name, sir, and where are you from? My name is Zig, and I'm from Leon- Leonia, New Jersey. Uh, coach, I think you're doing a great job. And uh, before I ask my question, I think a comment um, uh, needs to be made. Uh, as a fan, when you're in the stands and you see a guard or a tackle go down, most people get into a panic mode. And uh, watching Andre go off the field wasn't very pleasant. When you have a center, especially a guy like Batim go off the field, you gulp. I mean, it's now two linemen down. And I think it's amazing, okay, that we replaced two linemen. Maybe a lot of fans didn't notice it. They came in. They didn't skip a beat. There's no sacks. I think it's a testimony to what you guys have done recruiting training these kids and I think it's amazing when you have that many linemen being in, being the the old line coach uh, kudos to you thank you amazing thank you. And, and I think coach Robo has done a, done an excellent job of, of building that depth yeah we felt like we had some depth in the preseason and you know depth is something you, you hope never to find out about because when you find out about how much depth you really have it's usually for the reasons you just stated you have some injuries but you know Matt McBride Taj Alexander they did a nice job when they got in there and even some of the other guys that got in later in the game did a nice job as well Excellent. Uh, I was going to ask a question about B.J. Daniels, but you guys kind of got it covered. So um, I'm watching Jawan Jamison now for quite a few games, including last year. And this year in particular, uh, I see some similarities to Ray Rice. I don't want to make that comparison yet, but what's your thoughts on that? Because he looks amazing. It's, you know, it's a comparison that people are going to draw because the, Ray coming from Rutgers and now Juwan being here, you know, they're both – shorter type running backs to put it kindly but neither one would be somebody i describe as small you know they're both thick uh, rocked up guys juan has done a really nice job so far he's proven himself to be one of our better playmakers on offense if he can continue to do that any any comparisons that come between him and ray will certainly be complimentary to juan sure. you know, but we're still at the beginning stages of the year you know juan has to now go into big east play and do some of the things that he's done outside of league play. But we're really excited about what Juwan can do for us on offense, and there's no reason to believe that he won't continue to have success if he keeps practicing as hard as he's been practicing. I sure hope so. Thank you, Coach. Well, we got time for a couple of more questions and thoughts, so get them in on uh, Twitter at RU Athletics or here in person if you're in attendance here at the Audi Rutgers Club. We've got about 10 minutes left in the show. We'll take a quick timeout. Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, the official barbecue provider to Rutgers football. It is the perfect destination for all things barbecue, sports, and fun. More of your questions and comments coming up in just a moment from Nelligan Sports. This is the Kyle Flood Show. 
Hi, this is Paul Rotella, president of the New Jersey Broadcasters Association, of which I'm proud to say this station is a member. The NJBA, along with all of our other member broadcasters, are dedicated to equal employment opportunities in broadcasting. We want everyone who is qualified to know about and apply for all of the job openings our member stations have available. If you belong to or know of any community group that helps people find jobs, we want to know about them so that when a job opening comes up at this station, we can notify them so they can notify all of their members who'd like to know about and apply for jobs in radio and television. And let us know of any other New Jersey station your organization would like to be notified about when they have a job opening as well. Please tell these organizations to contact me, Paul Rotella, and care of this station or visit our website, njba.com, to check out the Job Opportunity Employment Listing Service. This job listing service is a free Equal Employment Opportunities Outreach Program brought to you by the New Jersey Broadcasters Association and this great New Jersey radio station. Start the music. We want you. Without you, the world is not the same. Yes, we are talking to you. You who is not afraid to get your hands dirty. You who makes the world run better. You pipe fitters, plumbers, mechanics, and drivers. We are NewJerseyHelpWanted.com. And we need you! It's a little loud. Skilled laborers of all kinds, we love you. Fireworks! NewJerseyHelpWanted.com. Long name, amazing results. Oh, look, honey, your picture is in the dictionary. Really? Under the word ironic. Ironic. Yeah, as in, isn't it ironic that you, an unemployed IT specialist... That's me. Isn't it ironic that you are using neither information nor technology to look for a job? What are you saying? NewJerseyHelpWanted.com. They have jobs online for me? They have more IT job listings than they have applicants. Should I go there? Well, yeah, unless you want your picture under another I word. Which would be... Ignoramus. Right. NewJerseyHelpWanted.com for IT. Long name, amazing results. Now, back to the Audi Rutgers Club at High Point Solutions Stadium in Piscataway for more of the Kyle Flood Show on that new talk radio, 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com. Once again, here are your co-hosts, Chris Carlin and Eric Legrand, along with Rutgers head football coach, Kyle Flood. We're at the Audi Rutgers Club. The giant Kyle Flood head made the trip. <laughs> It always makes me feel at home when I see that. How do, how do you feel when you see that? It's surreal. It, the first time I saw it was at a basketball game I attended after, after becoming the head coach last year, and I said to myself, my life will never be the same again. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into a, a couple of other specifics about this game. We've talked about B.J. Daniels. The, the one thing that um, I think when you think about B.J. Daniels, you think about a guy that can kind of move around the pocket, that kind of thing, that concerns you. He can throw the deep ball, and they have relied on the deep ball quite a bit, especially they had a tremendous come-from-behind win last week uh, out at Nevada, and the the – you know, they certainly connected on the deep ball a couple times to Andre Davis, who was the Big East Offensive Player of the Week. No doubt, and they had two receptions of over 50 yards in the last three minutes of that game, which shows you exactly how explosive they can be in a short amount of time. And as his receivers grow with him this year – He's got a lot of weapons that, that he can get the ball to. Hey, coach, we were just talking about depth before. How confident does that make you feel as a coach, knowing that you could throw another guy in there that can go out there and not lose a beat out there, especially now with the defense back, as we we're talking about the deep ball, you know, with Brandon Jones and Marcus Cooper, Logan Ryan. You may, can throw one of them in there. You can trust one of them. How does that make you feel? It, it, may, it makes me feel really good, and, and that's a matchup that's going to be a critical matchup in the game. And we certainly have players on our team that we trust and guys that have done a great job for us over the years. It's, it's, it's not a small resume that they have when you talk about guys like Brandon Jones and Marcus Cooper and Deron Harmon and Logan Ryan, Lorenzo Waters. We're going to need – and Wayne Warren. We're going to need every one of them. You know, because, like I said, they, could, they can put weapons on the field. You know, they can play in three and four wide receiver sets, and you, and you have to have the defensive backs to match up with them. You mentioned their uh, defensive line and their linebackers earlier. How about your offense? How do you feel like it matches up against this defense? I think it's a great challenge for us. It's, it's something that, that we're going we're gonna to find out very early in the game, you know, exactly how we match up. I, I don't think – I don't go into the game with any preconceived notions uh, about any of that. What I know is we've done a good job so far – but what I've tried to challenge our offensive line, our tight ends, our running backs, et cetera, with this week is now it's Big East football. So it, I think we've had a great start. We've had a nice two-game stretch. And now it's time to play Big East championship football. 
But their defensive line, you know, they're going to be all amped up like it's the Big East game. You know, it's right on Thursday. You think they're going to be coming right after the quarterback. Nova, do you think we'll see more draws and more squeeze in the beginning of the game because how amped up that defensive line will be? I can't tell you that. I have to kill <laughs> <laughs> But they do, have, they do have defensive ends who can get up the field, and that, that certainly makes them susceptible to, to those types of plays. And you have to have them in your offense, and we do, and that's no secret. They, they, South Florida certainly knows we have draws and screens in our, in our offense and, and in every week and every game plan. You have a certain number of those to try to take advantage of those guys as they rush the passer. Mm-hmm. we got an uh, opportunity to get a question in from a fan here in attendance. Sir, go ahead. Hi, I'm uh, Gary in Somerset, and uh, Coach, I know when you took over Rutgers earlier this year, you said you weren't going to you know, totally change the program because you were happy with the direction it was going that you and uh, Greg had, had formed. What about at South Florida? They changed coaches, I think, two years ago with Skip Holtz taking over and Jim Levitt. How has he changed that program in the past couple of years? You know, I think that that would probably be a, a better question you know, for Coach Holtz. I, I don't know that I've seen any tremendous changes. Now, this year they have a new defensive coordinator. You know, their structure of defense is different this year than it was last year, but Coach Holtz was the coach last year. They just had a change in coordinators. Their, their new defensive coordinator, Chris Kosh, has a little bit different system in how he plays defense as opposed to the, the prior defensive coordinator. But Skip Holtz is a proven commodity. He's a proven winner. You know, he's proven that he can win conference championships when he was at East Carolina. And he, I know they didn't have the season in terms of results that they wanted last year, but I know they felt like they got a lot better in their program in a lot of areas. So, you know, Coach Holtz does an excellent job with that group down there. But I don't know if I can tell you all the specifics of how exactly they've changed everything. The offense structurally is not much different. The defense is because they have a new coordinator. Okay. Can I also ask you quickly, have you had a chance to take a quick peek at the tape of how LSU Monroe beat Arkansas? Uh, we, do not, we do not jump ahead like that. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have that luxury. And certainly not in a short week would we ever have that luxury. You know, right now, our entire focus is on this South Florida game. We won't turn our sights anywhere else until that game is over. I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask the two of you about one thing in college football. That's Devin Walker from Tulane. I know that you reached out to, to Coach Johnson. First of all, Eric, with you, uh, have you had any contact with, with Devin or any of his family as of yet? Actually, I have had contact through another guy, Alan Brown, who's been in the chair for 25 sure. years, who's actually been contacting me with him and keeping me updated on what's going on. And I know the same type of situation that he's going through the first week or so. You have no idea what's going on. I remember, I don't remember really anything until Wednesday and it happened on a Saturday so I said I wanted to kind of stay in the background for a little while until he gets you know a little bit better a little bit more healthier and I know his mom is going through a lot too and she's probably talking to so many other people that she doesn't want to talk to this person or this person at this time so I'm giving them a little space but what I want to do is talk to their Tulane team and talk to them a little bit about what they should do and how they should handle this situation that sounds like a great idea coach you reached out to coach Johnson I did and and the only reason I reached out to him is because we're in the unique position uh, in terms of having a program that's gone through this. And all I wanted to do was, was offer any support that they felt they needed or try to answer any questions that maybe we could answer or at least put them in touch with somebody that could answer. But, but I'm sure they're working with the best people down there and, and they're doing a great job for them. Well, our thoughts are with Devin and his family right now. He's a young man from Tulane, uh, in case you missed it, who uh, unfortunately uh, broke his neck in a game this past weekend against, uh, against uh, Tulsa. And hopefully uh, everything turns out just okay for this uh, young man as he continues to work his way back. Meanwhile... Rutgers has to press on, and they have the short week, and the Scarlet Knights get set for Thursday night football against South Florida. Coach, once again, thanks for joining us. We're looking forward to Thursday night and a little primetime football. We're looking forward to it as well. Primetime. <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank everybody in attendance here at the Audi Rutgers Club for joining us for the Kyle Flood Show. Right here on the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and on ScarletKnights.com. Our vision. Make sure you join us Thursday night for the pregame show. It all begins at six uh, at six o'clock on WCTC, and of course, kickoff at seven thirty on ESPN. Join us then for the coach Kyle Flood and Eric Legrand. I'm Chris Carlin. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. The Kyle Flood Show, the weekly hour-long program with the Rutgers head football coach, has been a sports presentation of the New Talk Radio 1450 WCTC and WCTCAM.com, the voice of the Scarlet Knights.